All right, let's take a look at the tail of the tape for this opening tournament tilt. Kuyala, one year older, identical in height, one half pound heavier at weigh-in time for Kuyala, although Tate is a pretty big girl for this weight division, and a two-inch reach advantage for Tate. This tournament semifinal bout is scheduled for two three-minute rounds. Three judges will score the bout each round using the 10-point must system. The winner of each round gets 10 points, a loser nine or less, based on effective striking, grappling, aggression, and cage control. We're scheduled for two three-minute rounds with referee Ron Nation in charge of the action. The two touch gloves, the first ever Strike Force Women's 135 pound tournament is underway. Immediately, Tate shoots out the left hand and immediately goes for the clinch, looking for that takedown, well defended by Kuyala. Kuyala looks like she's pretty strong in the clinch. Short knee strike by Tate. Another knee to the outside of Kuyala's leg, trying to wear down Kuyala's foundation, softening her up for a possible shoot. Needs to extricate herself, however, using the overhook, underhook, 50-50 position, and Kuyala making things difficult here for Tate in the early going. Yeah, she did a nice job of horsing herself off the cage. Now she's back there again, but it shows she knows what she's doing on her feet in the clinch. And Kuyala is really keeping her hips back when she's out away from the cage, too. And it's hard for Misha to grab one of those legs and go for those single or double leg takedowns. Again, with two three-minute rounds, one would think that would favor the striker, not the grappler. Tate, of course, known for her incredible wrestling prowess, has been working on her all-around game at Ultimate Fitness. Team Alpha Male in Sacramento under former WEC featherweight champion Uriah Faber. Kuliala looks up to none other than Joachim Hansen. A big star from Norway, competing mainly in Japan. They're gonna try for the guillotine. Watch, and Tate takes Kuyala down into side control. Kuyala focusing on that guillotine. She's got no position right now. You can't go for submissions without position, especially a guillotine. She would be well advised to probably release but yeah, you want to create time. space on bottom there in that position, Moro, instead of keeping her tight, because by having your arm draped over your opponent's head, that basically helps your opponent keep you flat on the mat. She should release that left hand and push that knee back and try and get full guard here. Interesting that Kuyala is sporting the uh, same kind of tights as uh, worn by uh, none other than Shinya Aoki in Japan and wondering who that is to the advantage of in this fight. Well, it's to the advantage of the grappler. You want friction as a grappler. If I'm a striker, I'm not wearing anything of the sort. You have to go for submissions, I'm gonna stand you up. Come on. Referee Ronnie Nation instructing the fighters. There's the choke. They call it the Von Flu, but it's been done uh, for many years. Oh, oh ref stop. didn't even know what she was doing. Oh, there. that is a that is a very bad restart here by the referee, Ronnie Nation. That's uh, oh wow, unbelievable. Uh, Pat, you were calling it the Von Flu choke, and at the end of the round, some controversy there. He had that shoulder in position, and I guess the referee didn't understand what was going on. Well, it's his job to understand what's going on. As I've said, it helps to have fought to referee. Lori, where's the water at? Water. It's amazing. It is, is absolutely it? amazing that uh, the officiating and judging in the sport, as young as it is, continues to be first a round topic of action. Discussion. Here's Tate with a nice takedown. You know. Guyala basically assisted Tate in taking her down by staying glued to the, to the uh, head and arm choke. She didn't have position to do it, and that helped her. Here's Tate basically going for the side choke when, uh, when your opponent has the guillotine and your cross sides are half guard. You throw your right arm under their head, and you can choke them out. Referee stopped it, though. Guyala's corner not creating much of a fuss. Maybe didn't see what we were seeing, Pat. Second and final round. 
Again, just three minutes in duration. Each stanza, the winner advancing to the final. And again, Tate with the one-two combination. Finishes it off with an inside leg kick. Nice push kick. Kuyala comes straight forward. Good flurry by Tate there, backing up. Nice work. Kuyala had no head movement coming in, so she ate about three punches. Kuyala breaks away from the clinch with a right hand. Jab by Tate. It's almost a damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario for Kuyala because if she stays on the inside and throws punches, she's going to get clinched. If she stays on the outside, she's going to get kicked in the leg. She is a very game fighter, involved in some dirty boxing here, short uppercuts. Now pummeling with Tate Tate, looking to maybe deliver some knees. Kuyala with the wizard. And this, three minute rounds, every single second counts. Kuyala trying to scoot down the cage to get out. She needs to hit that wizard hard, then bring the right arm to the underhook and turn her back the other way. Knee to the belly by Kuyala. Tate, knee screen separation. Knee just grazes the midsection of Kuyala, and Kuyala keeps coming forward. May not have head movement, but just, oh, high head kick delivered there. Just grazes the head of Kuyala by Tate. Kuyala had said before the fight that she considered wow. herself a little bit slow, and I'm seeing that here against Misha Tate in the punching exchanges. She's doing a great job of keeping Tate at bay and defending the takedowns very well thus far. Tate, the bigger of the two athletes, Pat, and yet Kuyala continues to do a, a great job here. Kuyala's a strong girl. She's doing a good job eating a few knees here, but she's stayed busy and been marching forward a lot of this round throwing. And she may be eating some knees, but she's responding with uppercuts. Absolutely. I mean, it scores. Call her an elbow tie up here they finally separate last 50 seconds left in the fight I don't think that kick scored I'm not sure but it didn't look like it did Wow Kuyala finally gets taken down by Tate that was a big takedown for Misha I think that probably won the round for her she got Kuyala moving forward and did the duck under and it was an easy takedown Kuyala was doing so well in those grinding clinch exchanges with the punches and then on her back again. Trying to defend, but now Tate moves into, well, the knee is still there, not fully in cross side position. Very gritty, lots of heart being exhibited here by Kuyala. Final eight seconds, will it finish in a flurry for Tate? Continues to pepper away at the body. Kuyala again looking for that choke and this fight is over, going to the judges' scorecards. Maybe a bit of a surprise as Kuyala, the great unknown coming into the tournament, probably a surprise Tate with her grit. Tate doing a good job in the first round. Here's a nice front kick to the face. Nothing more, nothing more embarrassing to a fighter or, well, angering to a fighter than to get kicked in the face. Here's the head kick, skipped off the hand, went over the head, but it was a nice attempt at landing that head kick. She was looking to score points. Tate took a couple steps back, almost like a fadeaway takedown. Drop back a couple steps, dropped underneath, got the takedown, got her co coming forward. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards, where all three judges scored the bout the same. The winner by unanimous decision. Out of the red corner, she is Misha. Takedown, Tate. A mixed response here at the Dodge Theater. Misha, congratulations, your fourth consecutive win. Coming into the tournament, you said that Kuyala was the athlete you were least worried about because of her lack of experience. What do you think of her overall performance tonight? She's amazing. She's really tough. You know, I, I, I knew she lacked experience, but I figured she was kind of the black horse coming into this tournament. I knew she was coming here to win. And I just figured my skill would uh, shine through here, and that's what enabled me to beat her, but she's got a hell of a heart. You went the distance. You have another fight left. How are you feeling right now? On top of the world, baby. I'm ready. All right, Misha Tate advances to the final of the first ever Strike Force Women's 135-pound tournament.